Well, hello, I'm Graham Park and welcome to another Creative Futures session where I talk to a variety of creative industry professionals in front of an online audience of students from Glyndur University. Now, today, our special guest is a British actor, probably best known for playing the character Sam O'Brien in the long running Hollyoaks TV show. Please welcome Darren Jeffries. Hello, Darren. Hi, Graham. How are you? So thank you for, for joining us. Now, although you're known as a northerner who grew up in Warrington, before we begin, you were actually born in Wrexham, home of Glyndur University. So you're a Welshman. I am. I am. It's very hard to tell. But um, no, I was born in Wrexham. Um, I lived there till I was... I mean, I don't remember really telling people that I'm Welsh because I feel like I don't deserve to call myself Welsh because I lived there for like two years, I think, before I moved to Warrington. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Warrington is kind of a, a well, it's not kind of, it is a town which is slap bang in the middle uh, of Manchester and Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, my family uh, still are originally all from, uh, on my side, all from Wales. Uh, and my mum's side as well, my, uh, my granddad as well, uh, from Wales as well. So they all still live in the area. They're in, um, they're in Gwynamunith, uh, Mould. Um, the majority of my family. But yeah, originally from Wrexham, that's right. So, I mean, what you say, Warrington, smack in the middle of Manchester and Liverpool, a place I know well, I lived there, I lived there myself uh, for many years. Um, so, but, I, I, but yeah, you please call yourself Welsh. I, I left Aberdeen when I was very little, but I'm still, I'm still a Scotsman. Um, now, you grew up in Warrington. You went to Padgate Community High School former pupils include Chris Evans, a former neighbour of mine, Kerry Katona, but that's another um, that's another talk for another time. That, that's probably going to be a censored one. Anyway. No, I, I need to know about that at some point. I another time. Do. Another time. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, is it when you were at Padgate Community High School, now Padgate Academy, is that when you realised you wanted to be an actor or is it something that you wanted to do before you went to secondary school? Um, I think... I was always creative from a, from quite a young age uh, in sort of various ways. So I loved um, I loved writing stories, for example. Um, I loved playing around with my dad's video camera and, and with my toys and making little films and things like that. So I, and I loved, always loved um, films as well from a young age. So, um, but when it comes to acting, I think I really kind of got into it when I was around. Uh, it was in the final year of primary school where we had a school play um, and each year the, the 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 oldest year the year they were just about to leave would put on a, a production so ours was uh with the willow told and told home and we all had to audition um and i i don't remember really taking it seriously or even giving it a second thought actually i, I wasn't i didn't have any designs to be uh to have a big role or anything like that but i just um audition because we had to and then um i found out that i'd got the role of, of toad in front of toad and um it was a five day uh, it was it was on for five nights and as soon as we started working on it i just fell in love with it straight away i loved everything about it, the rehearsals even though i was you know i would have been like 11 maybe 11 or 12 um, i loved everything about it not just the performing side of it but the whole the whole I love the teacher showing us the plan he had for, uh, for the sets and the costumes. I just it, it blew me away. So as soon as I did that, that's when I decided that I wanted to be an actor. So I kind of went, I left primary school after that and kind of went into high school with, with plans to be become an actor off the back of that. Mm. Uh, I mean, I was just in high school, Continued with that, just getting involved in all the school plays, things like all the productions, and obviously drama as well. I got to study drama, which was amazing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I had a fairly similar experience. I, 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 I auditioned for Jungle Book. I became Shere Khan. I wanted to be a tiger, but that never really worked out in life. Became a, a DJ instead. But anyway, um, not <laughs> particularly relevant. But I can, I mean, Toad. What, what did you have to? How did you take on the character of a Toad at the age of eleven? 
can't remember, to be honest. I, just <laughs> did. I, remember, I remember just enjoying it and having loads of fun with it. I mean, it's, it's a, he's a great character anyway, you know. I'd love to play him now, to be honest, because he's, so, he, he's, he's just so full of life, isn't he? And he's, 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 a bit of a, he's a bit of a, you know, he's quite noxious as well, which is still quite fun to play. Um, I'm trying to remember the story now, but I know that he, he kind of gets quite full of himself and gets brought down a peg or two. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to play. I had to dress up as a washerwoman, which was fun as well. I remember quite enjoying that, wearing a dress. So, so it was that's, an integral, <laughs> that's an integral part of being a British actor, is, is dressing as a woman at some point. Um, so did, did you have an opportunity at Padgate uh, High School to do any drama or any acting? Uh, so I studied drama each year, um, which was obviously required from uh, the first year. And then I chose to do it for my GCSEs as well. So I, I did it all through uh, high school. Uh, again, we did a, a production each year and, and I was involved in that. Uh, we did Little Shop of Horrors. We did Bugsy Malone. We did Grease. Uh, they're the ones that I can remember. Mm. Um, but in terms of pursuing it as a career, I, 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 I was clueless completely because I didn't live anywhere, you know, I was in a particularly cosmopolitan area, you know, Warrington, it's your typical northern town. I didn't live in London, I wasn't surrounded by culture or anything like that. So in terms of doing it, um, pursuing it as a career, I had no idea. And it's a bit of a cliche, I know a lot of that to say, but I do specifically remember sitting in the careers office and telling the careers officer at, I think 13, 14, that I wanted to be an actor. And oh, great. She just completely tried to talk me out of it. Just like, well, that's not, you know, that's not very realistic. Um, maybe you should consider something else. And, and we ended up just not discussing it at all. So this is, this is interesting because obviously you are now, I bet you at Badgate Academy, I bet you are now former student and well-known actor. I bet, you they, I bet you they're quite happy to promote you as a former student, right? Yeah, I mean, the school were really supportive, though. It was the, the careers officer, I think, came into the school, from what I remember. It was somebody whose job it was to visit every school and speak to the pupils. Um, the school itself um, were, were quite supportive in terms of, um, of I don't think they knew what to do with, with anyone at, at that age that wanted to point out. So I think it's a bit, it's a lot, you know, it's very different now. I'm, I'm really envious of. Of young people who want to do anything actually because as soon as you make that decision in your head all you've got to do is google it and the information is just there for the taking whereas that wasn't the case so um i remember just wanting to tell people that i was going to be an actor wanting to be an actor but not knowing how i was going to do it at all yeah i mean like you're right living in in, in warrington you say it's not very cultural it does have a cultural quarter it's more of a cultural, mm. cultural eighth, I think. But anyway, um, but the Par Hall is, sorry, I shall stop with it, wisecracks. The, the Par Hall is in that cultural course, and it's a very well-known uh, arts venue. Um, you ended up uh, getting involved with the Par Hall. Uh, were you still at school, or had you left school when that happened? Um, so I was still in school. Uh, I was 14. And my mum said to me, uh, she found, she saw an advert in the local paper, the Warrington Guardian, for a, a summer school uh, for uh, kids that wanted to perform. So that was kind of, I just leapt at the chance because that was the first inkling I'd, I'd, I'd had of, of anything outside of school that was acting. So it was at the Village Hotel in Warrington and it was a four or five week course, I think, um, evenings from what I remember. Uh, and we we meet in this room, and it was this lovely lady called Lynn Wright, and we worked on a, uh, a showcase that was going to be put on at, at Park Hall, as you say. Um, so, yeah, we did the performance at Park Hall. It wasn't anything sort of elaborate. It was, you know, it wasn't like a huge production or anything like that. We didn't set or anything. It was all very... Uh, sort of bare bones, but it was all about, I think, just showing us off in terms of work that we'd achieved and what we could do. So all the parents came along and um, uh, a few um, acting agents came along as well. Um, and there was an agent in the audience who approached my uh, parents afterwards and asked if I had to be uh, represented, which completely blew them away because that, you know, the idea of 
an agent just you know wanting to represent you it, you know at any age is just amazing when you want to be an actor but at that age it was kind of you know it was all so new to us uh so that was really exciting and we just leapt at the chance so we signed up to a what well, we signed me up an agency called kids and Go. They were based, i don't know if it's still going uh they were based in the Wirral in liverpool over the over merseyside way and so that was when i was um yeah about 14 years old so yeah, the Par Hall is where I kind of got my big break in a way. Uh, so was, how did that feel? Because obviously you'd performed in front of your peers at school, but this was in front of a wider audience. Did I, did you get a different buzz or was it still, I'm on stage, I, this is what I want to do? Was it a similar feeling or different? I remember loving the fact that I was working um, with new, like meeting new people, which I still love now. I love it when you get an acting job and you're surrounded by these people that you're going to get to know very quickly and, and very well in a short space of time. And, and it's all people from different backgrounds. And I remember really enjoying that. I remember really enjoying uh, being in the company of, of, of kids from other schools and other areas. Um, the actual production, again, I just didn't give it a second thought. I just remember just doing it, you know? I didn't, that side of it, I, I don't remember kind of really processing, just getting on with it, you know? It didn't really, uh, yeah, no, it didn't occur to even compare, to be honest. I so, thought it was great being in Par Hall, because that's such a massive venue. And funnily enough, I'm next door to Par Hall now. Par Hall is literally in the building next to me here, because my office is in the cultural quarter. Um, oh, right. right at the moment yeah yeah so it's nice and um i produced a video for par hall recently which i'll get to later i've still got these connections in warrington which is lovely but uh, yeah it's a beautiful venue so so was the agent the, the the person who got you your audition for the part you ended up getting in, in hollyoaks tell us how that came about yeah so um they were a modeling and um, actors agency. So they asked me to do both, I have no idea why. So um, as a youngster, I, I, I did a couple, over the age of sort of 14, I did a couple of um, modeling jobs for like catalogs and things like that, which didn't really interest me. I did it, but I didn't, didn't like it. didn't get anything out of it at all. It wasn't something that I wanted to pursue. Um, I liked the pocket, but that was about it. And I auditioned uh, that's, for... That's ASOS's loss then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then... Um, yeah, and then I auditioned... I think I did an audition for Brookside first. For a young lad in Brookside. I can't remember the character. Nothing came of that. And then about a year after signing with the agency, so I would have been 15, I got the audition for, um, yeah, I got offered the audition for Hollyoaks. And it was really weird because me and my brother uh, were at that age where, you know, we're obviously getting a little bit more obsessed with girls and things like that. And we used to watch Hollyoaks uh, all the time. We'd only started watching it about two months before the audition came in. So it was all, it was all a bit, that was a bit weird too, because we were watching it and getting really into it. And then the phone rang and it was my agent saying, did I want to audition for it? And we were like, oh. and I remember sitting with my brother and chatting and going, oh God, how weird would it be to be on Hollyoaks now, you know, now that we're watching it. And we kind of laughed about it and was it. And then I um, got, uh, I think it was three round of auditions that I had to go through uh, to get the role. Um, and yeah, that was at 15, so a year, a year after signing, which was at the time kind of I took it on the chin a little bit it was just you know I'd never experienced it before so I was just kind of in it when I look back on it I kind of realize how um slightly unheard of that is you know to actually get that lucky that quickly um mm. you know it, I was really really lucky in that respect that that wasn't anything you know I got the agent but it was nothing I did that was just you know, the universe working in my favour, getting me that, that audition a year after signing an agent, because it's, it's, it's relatively unheard of, you know, so that was quite, quite easy. Um, so, actually, Suzanne, um, Suzanne, one of the people watching, has got a question about uh, this agency. Suzanne, do you want to switch your mic and camera on and, and, and ask Darren... This question because it's, it's I, I'm asking you now because it's appropriate to the conversation we're having now. So Suzanne, 
Do you want to I'm ask not him? Not going to put the camera on because I look like shite. But okay, uh, fair enough. But you can ask. So, so uh, Gary. Did, did your parents have to pay for the summer school and to join the agency? Just kind of, you know, those opportunities for people that could pay for things. Yeah. Um, so they paid for the summer school, but I, we, I'm not saying that I came from a particularly uh, poor background, but I, I, I certainly didn't come from an affluent background. But I remember it not being a thing, you know, the, the, what it was. I think it was very affordable. Um, I think it was really reasonable in that respect. And then the agents, uh, no, I didn't know, but I know even to this day that there are agents out there that ask people to pay to sign up, which is, um, shouldn't be the case, which is wrong, you know. Uh, so I, I come into contact with a lot of people whose kids want to be actors and they, and they always say to me, oh, did, um, should, I, should I be paying? And I found an agent that wants to charge me hundred pounds a year to join and I always say no stay away and I don't that's not the way it, it works kind of thing um if, if that is why you're asking if you're wondering whether you should be paying or not yeah no yeah, that's good totally sorry Suzanne people, um you know people people get up the ladder because there's financial backing from parents you know where that's it's whether it stops you from, from realising your dream if your parents are from a lower income family. That's my yeah, thing. Yeah, well, I think, again, I think I was really lucky because, as I say, I wasn't surrounded by those opportunities at all. Um, and my mum had seen the advert in the paper. I don't know what we would have come across at a later date because we just weren't surrounded by those kind of things. Um, I think these days, I would have... I would say that those opportunities are much easier to come by in terms of discovering them because we have the internet, we have all this communication, which is amazing. But I think you're right. I think it's much more expensive to go down those roads. I think there's a lot of people um, making probably too much money off um, that journey that you've got to make, especially uh, drama schools. You know, I think the cost of some drama schools is just insane and they'll and, and they'll charge people to audition as well with you know for the school which i think is um, a complete different conversation I, you know not something that i'm on board with at all i think it is much harder for for people um from certain backgrounds to, to get those opportunities it always has been you know well while we're on while we're on the subject of agents do you do you still have an agent and and um how important is an agent for for an actor um, I think it is really, really important. I think you have to get an agent at the right time. I think some people, um, some actors feel like they're not an actor until they get an agent. Um, I think they feel that they'll only begin working when they get an agent. And I don't know if that used to be the case, but it certainly isn't the case now. And I think um, it's a bit like anything in life, you know, like getting married or having kids you've got to you've got you've got to do it when you're ready you've got to do it when 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 everything's in place and it's the it's the right time to do it whether you want it or not and um i think when it comes to getting an agent what i'd say to any young actors is the more experience you've got the more knowledgeable you are and the more aware of what kind of actor you are and, and, and what kind of roles you want to be going for, um, when all those things are in place, and that can take years, you know, but when all those things are in place, you're going to get the perfect agent who's going to get you work straight away. Um, well, I say straight away, get your auditions straight away, um, which is what you want. Um, you see other apps just want an agent they don't care who it is they'll just google agents they'll email all of them and they'll cross their fingers and they'll join one and then it doesn't work out because it's not the right fit you know it's got to be the right fit it's got to be a genuinely um, it's got to be a, the right uh, relationship you know they've got to have apps uh, on their books or either getting the roles that you want etc etc but yeah, so, so just to reiterate, it, it's got to be a two-way street. It's not a case of you just sitting around waiting for the agent to get you what. You've got to have a relationship with your agent. And and a point that uh, Zoe, who's uh, one of one of the people watching, she pointed out that her daughter was with the same agency that you were 
with when when you were younger but apart from paying for photograph after that it was the agent takes a percentage of what you earn and, and you have to make sure that's all transparent and clear from the off don't you yeah they'll always take a percentage um i think it varies from agent to agent and i think also it varies from, from depending on how the work that you do well i think um, some agents will take a higher percentage if it's a TV job compared to a theatre job. Um, I think it can be different for a commercial as well. Um, mm. But the, the, the commission tends to hover around the sort of 10, 12, 15 percent sort of area. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's jump back to your career. So you, you end up your first proper acting job, really, at a very young age. Like you say, you got the breaks, you kind of grab those opportunities with both hands and there you go you end up in Hollyoak so it's quite a high profile job so how did how did it feel getting that gig so early and so young in your career uh, I remember the actual uh, not being intimidated by the actual um, audition process and I, I, that must be a, an age thing you know I think when you're young you don't tend to overthink the, uh, the possibilities, you know, when, when you get older and you've got a mortgage to pay and you're going for an audition, that's a little bit different. So, um, yeah, and then getting the job, I remember just being, I think, yeah, I was in school and um, one of the uh, secretaries from the office, the school office came into my class and um, asked if I could go to the, um, the headmaster's office. So I thought I'd done something wrong, obviously. And then when I got there, my parents were there. Um, this was like one o'clock in the afternoon and I was a bit like, what's going on here? And they'd have a phone call from my um, agent saying that I've got the part and they didn't wait until I finished school to tell me that he came in. Um, <laughs> and they had to get permission from the school anyway. So that we had that conversation there. And then I remember just getting on with it. I don't remember being that overwhelmed by it. I think I, I would have been, I would have been nervous. I would have been slightly nervous because I'd never stepped foot on a TV set before. They didn't train me either. It wasn't like I did a day's worth of, of rehearsals or a week's worth of rehearsals. I literally just turned up on the set and it was all going on around me. And um, I kind of realized quite quickly that, you know, I had to um, step up and, and learn as much as I could. So you learn so quickly in that environment anyway because you're in the middle of it you know it's happening around you so how old were you you're still at school you see how old were you yeah i was 15 when i started 15. yeah 15 years and old. obviously you from what you said your parents were obviously very supportive of this to actually come to school that, that was uh, what about your schoolmates or all your friends how did they react and then did you in fact go hey guess what everyone i'm going to be in hollywood so how did you tell them oh, no far from it far from it i that was the funny enough you asked you know, whether, um, what, it, what that experience was like. That was the harder part. Doing the job and, and being on the show wasn't an issue. But at 15, you know, you just want to be like everybody else, don't you? You yeah. don't want, well, I, anyway, I didn't want to stand out. And, you know, I've never, even though I'm an actor, I've never enjoyed being, I want to sound like an absolute liar now, but <laughs> I've never enjoyed being the centre of attention. I don't mind when I'm acting, you know, but in, in general, I'm never, I never try to be the loudest voice in the room. So in school, I, um, I just didn't, I didn't even want anybody to know. I, I wanted to get a secret. I didn't want anybody to speak to me about it. I took my form to it to one side because she congratulated me because she'd heard obviously in the staff room or whatever. And I said to her, um, please don't tell anyone. I said, can you not tell anybody um, that I'm doing it. And she was like, yeah, but you're going to be on TV at some point. I was like, yeah, but I'll deal with that then. At the moment, can you just not keep it quiet? And she completely interrupted me. Like, literally 10 minutes later, she went, Darren's got an announcement to make. And made me stand <laughs> up and tell me. So, yeah, I was a bit gutted about that. And I remember a kid who was a bit, he was a bit of a, a bit of a wrong one, as you said. He came up to me and said, uh, Congratulations, but if you if you start thinking you're better than us, uh, we'll I mean, you know I swear on, on Zoom, we'll threaten you basically. So I think it was the school I was in. I just learned really early on that I didn't want to make a thing. That, I think that's I think that's a really 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 good attitude actually. One one to be applauded. But but surely now if you if you're still a Warrington based lad, when you pop out 
to the shops, even with your mask on. Come on, you must get you must get recognised. Yeah, not as much as I used to. I, I get people. I don't get um, uh, approached as much, which I quite like. I just get people like staring at me like they went to school. <laughs> like they're thinking, did I go to school with you? Ah, oh, right. Yeah, there's that. But um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so you... yeah, just, uh, yeah, school was a completely different kettle of fish, but you know that's how it is for a lot of teenagers, isn't it? We don't exactly. So, so you spend ten years in Hollyoaks, and presumably, if if it's the same agent, uh, they're getting your wage going up a little bit as you go along. You're learning on the job, you're making new friends, making new contacts, and then for some reason, after ten years, you decide to leave and pursue other interests. Now, I've got a few questions here. Why? Did you leave such a great gig like that? Was it your decision or did you get a kind of inkling that you might have been written out, your character might have been written out or killed off? Or did you get that soap star um, attitude that you didn't want to be typecast? Why? Why would you leave such a, such a good thing like that? So I was on the show from 15 to 25, uh, which are kind of, you, you know, I suppose you, I didn't know it at the time, but they're kind of your formative years, aren't they? You know, you, they, they kind of, those years are who you kind of become for the rest of your life in some ways. So I actually grew up on the show, um, moved out of home at uh, 17, moved straight to Liverpool, lived, lived in a house with four lads off the cast. Uh, less said about that, the better, but we had a great time. And then, um, yeah, just did the show. And then I think I got to about, Maybe 22, yeah, 22, 23. Uh, it, it, I don't want to sound um, disrespectfully because I was always, from start to end, completely um, appreciative of the, of the job, you know, especially with knowing my background, knowing how lucky I was, you know, I always was completely appreciative of it. But at the same time, got to a point where it didn't feel, um, it didn't feel special. It didn't feel, it just felt like a normal nine to five job. And, I, and I, I suppose, you know, it was a job that I'd done from 15 years old to my mid 20s. It's a long time in, in, in any job, you know? Mm. And I'd never, I'd never ever imagined being a, you know, sort of for the rest of my life anyway. And I just started to get my feet. That's it, really. I just started to get a little bit. A little bit uh, complacent as well. Actually. Right. So, so you never fancied being the Hollyoaks equivalent of Ken Barlow, basically, is what is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, when, when you're young as well, you, you want to see the world, don't you? And and well, you yes. Know, it was a great opportunity. Yeah, it was, and, and you know, no disrespect, it was the best opportunity, and I wouldn't be chatting to you now if it wasn't for it. But I could only go on holiday when they said I could, so I missed yeah. out on a lot. A lot of um, like, you know, trips away with friends, family occasions, things like that, because, you know, you work into their schedule. You know, they don't just give you two weeks. Um, I couldn't get my hair cut. Well, when I had more hair, I couldn't get my hair cut. Or they, you know, told me I could. I couldn't get a tattoo because my character, I, I wanted a tattoo and you know, I couldn't get one because my character wouldn't have a tattoo. And all these things, you kind of kind of want to, you kind of start rebelling against it a little bit. And I was just like, you know what? I want to travel. I want to go away for four months and see the world and all these things. And I was just getting it cheap overall. And yeah, that, well, yeah. In terms of acting as well, sorry, in terms of acting, wanting to try different roles too, you know, for yeah. the same character. Well, you say you want to try different roles, and, and, and I admire that confidence of being able to say, well, I've got this amazing um, life and gig, but I want to turn my back on it and do something else. And you did do something, but you did something not completely different, but fairly different. Along with fellow Hollyoaks um, actor Matt Littler, you went on to become a, a TV presenter, presenting Channel 4's V Festival coverage. Now, are you a music fan? If so, that must have been yeah. a great gig. You did the, the, the T4, which used to be like Channel 4's teen output, T4 versus Chart, again, another music-based programme. Um, you did some advertising, you became the face of the RAF's Least 9 to 5 campaign. And then, and then Red Bull Rivals, that took you on your international travel. Uh, freshly Squeezed with Matt Littler and Jamila Jamil and Matt Edmondson. 
ITV2 spin-off British Soap Awards, where you won an award with Matt for your best on-screen partnership, and ultimately as a radio presenter on Rock FM, as well as doing stuff on The Gadget Show. Why go from acting to presenting? Um, I didn't plan to at all. Like it really. Wasn't. There's a theme developing here. You didn't plan anything. But you'll carry on. Yeah. <laughs> the idea was. Oh, and the reason that I wanted to leave was because I wanted to live in London. I fell in love with London when I was visiting, so that was my plan. So I wanted to get a new agent, which I did, a London-based agent. Um, I moved down to London as soon as I left the show. So I was 25 years old. I moved down with three mates of mine uh, from Warrington as well. And we joined a mate of ours from Warrington. He was down there. I moved from a house of three lads in, in Liverpool to a house of uh, three Warrington lads in London. Um, and the idea was just to pursue the acting, you know? So I was auditioning. Um, I had a couple of things in the pipeline. And then I got offered present a V Festival, and, and I'm a big music fan. Um, I'd been to the V Festival um, since 1998, I think, every year since 1998, I've been to the V Festival and various others. So that was a, that was like a no brainer, you know, it was like, of course I'm gonna go to the V Festival and, and present. So we did all their backstage uh, coverage where we were kind of there moving reporters, I guess, me and Matt, and, and Matt was the guy that played my best mate in Hollyoaks. So we're kind of this double act. We were seen as this kind of partnership. And we both left the show roughly the same time. I think I left about maybe a year before he did, um, which was the time that I, you know, sorted myself out and gone down to London. So when we got off this, he just, he just rang me because he came through him and he was like, do you do it? I was like, yeah, of course, you know, let's go to the V Festival. So we did that. And then we just got offered another presenting job and another one, and another one. And then we were just suddenly tv presenters and, and and that was it there was no kind of there was no plan or like as i keep saying there was no i didn't want to be a tv presenter i didn't have it in my mind that i wanted to present what that we ended up doing next did the acting did the acting background help as a tv presenter or was it a completely different discipline totally different it was hard actually at first because suddenly i had to kind of be myself or like a version of myself you know it's not like you're not, you know, you've still got to turn on a little bit when you're presenting, but it doesn't matter what kind of day you've had, you've still got to be the best version of yourself, you know? And, did, you not have uh, to, did you not have to adopt a, ca a kind of fictional presenting character in your head? Well, I smiled a lot more than I do in normal, in real life, I think, because I've got kind of like quite, naturally got quite a sort of grumpy looking face. Um, and it was, yeah, I found it hard at first. Uh, well, not yeah, challenging and different, but knew that we were lucky to be doing it and just learn as much as I could, as quickly as I could, and spoke to a lot of it, it, Here's a question for you. As, as an actor, you have to learn your lines and, and learn your part and adopt a character. Mm -hmm. But as a presenter, uh, apart from, you know, learning roughly what you're going to say to camera and who you're going to introduce and everything, you, you must have had to do a few interviews. Um, did you research your own interviewees or did you have someone doing it for you? I did. You'll be glad to know, Graham. I did all my research myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm very methodical. I always have been and I still am. And um, I don't think, I'd have been too nervous to answer someone that I didn't know anything about. You know, I would, I, and, I, and it would have felt really authentic well, you know. You can't enjoy an interview if you don't know who that person is. It's all very flimsy and all a bit surface level then. I like to do my own um, research into them. I like um, sort of coming up with my own questions and think things that I thought were quite funny maybe to bring up and things like that. And it's great because you kind of do it doing everyone's job for them then. The producers love that, you know, because yeah. it's a collaboration. So Absolutely. yeah, I was, very, I was very on it when it came to that side of things. And how did you end up on Rock FM, uh, Lancashire's uh, independent um, radio, or well, say independent part of the Bower um, network? Presumably you, that meant moving back up north if you're on uh, a Preston radio, best Preston based radio station. Um, so it was just an extension of the presenting because we were presenting. They asked if we wanted to do a radio show. My battery's going to go one second. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. 
Brilliant. Don't worry. This is all good. This is all uh, live and direct. Yeah, so I... Uh, yeah, it's just the question of the presenting. They just approached my... Uh, so I had a new agent for my presenting. I think at some point I'd parted ways with my acting agent because I couldn't make the two work. And they approached my uh, presenting agent, uh, well, me and Matt, if we wanted to do a show. And it was, it was a Sunday morning show. So what I would do, I didn't move. I still lived in London. And I would get up at... Um, I think half five, six a.m. and drive straight to Preston from from London, do the show, and drive back uh, to London afterwards. Can I just tell you something, right? I used to work for Bauer Radio at that time uh, on the north the northern networks so that included Rock and Radio City and Key One Three and everything. And I could do my show from London if I wanted. They obviously kept that from you. There's a little studio in central London. You could have done it from there. Anyway, never mind. That's all in the past now. Um, so, and quickly, I was, getting about... up at... <laughs> I was getting up at half time. Why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, just quickly, the, the RAF thing that you did with Matt, how, that's an advert, basically, for the RAF. Why the RAF? Is it something that you um, believed in, or is it, or was it just a gig that paid well? Um, a little bit of both. My dad um, was in the Navy. Right. My dad huge he loves planes he loves cars he loves anything like that you know anything uh oh, an engine vehicles he's really into and he loves 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 uh planes and my he wanted us to be he wanted he was kind of hoping that me and my brother would would join the raf actually he kind of right into that when we were younger um so we get offered certain camp uh, certain uh, uh campaigns and things that's involved with and that was just one of them that kind of made a lot of sense, really. So we spent, it was just basically to encourage um, young people to consider it as a, as a career option, you know? It was all very fun. We spent, it was a little documentary, basically. We spent three days on a, on some barracks. I can't remember where they were now. It was an RAF base, huge RAF base, and we spent three days with the RAF, and they, they basically treated us like new recruits. So we did the, uh, the health and fitness side of it. We did the, uh, we learned to march, um, or everything that comes with with uh, being an RAF, um, you know, working for the RAF, basically. But it was more to do with encouraging people to get involved in the more sort of technical side of it, economic right. view and things like that. So, did, I mean, did this have, this was obviously the first bit of acting you'd done um, in a long time. Did that have any influence in you? Um, returning to study, you went to the Manchester School of Acting. Now, presumably, you then moved back up north. Yes. What happened was, I got London, as you do. Um, after a while, I went out of London. I met my, uh, my wife, um, who is originally from Warrington. So I, I've known my wife since we were, like, um, 17 years old. Oh, you um, romantic. Well, not really, no, because we were all very on and off. I thought I was a bit of a, I thought I was a bit of a Lario, so I, I didn't want to settle down with anyone. So I was single all the time and never used to like want to be in a relationship. And then, so we, but we kept in touch. And then she was working down in London, and we met up, and uh, that, and it, you know, it was the same time as I, I was getting bored with the. Um, I, I wasn't enjoying the presenting anymore. I wasn't getting much out of it. Um, in London, we met, so I moved back to Warrington and spent about well, actually, no, I moved back to Manchester first because my, my wife had an apartment in Manchester in the Northern Quarter, so we stayed there for about a year. And I spent a year not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, just being completely clueless. So I was about 30 then, um, and then realized it was, um, I wanted to. I missed acting. I wanted to get back into it. Genuinely missed it, you know? And I think that year was me not knowing how to do that um, because I'd stepped away from it completely. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd lost contact with everyone that, that, you know, in the industry that I'd worked with over the years because, you know, from being involved in the presenting side of it. Um, and I, I just, essentially I had to start again. That's how I saw it. I didn't want to try and get work off the back of a guy, being a guy that was in a soap, 10 years ago you know what I mean so 
I thought the only way to do it properly um, is to start from scratch, really. So I enrolled at the Manchester School of Acting, the Mark Hudson, who, who sort of coached me when I was in Hollyoaks uh, for certain things. Uh, but I'd lost touch with him as well, and he, he brought me back in, which was amazing. Um, so I studied there uh, once a week, um, and I did that for about, well, quite a while, actually, but it was about, after about a year of doing that, where I felt ready to start, you know. Yeah, so you, you, you then started doing theatre in, in Manchester, didn't you? Senseless Romance, yeah. In Flame, When Both Sides Surrender. So um, you've gone back to what you started doing when, when, you, when you started out. So, so how was that? Tell us about that. Um, well, I've never done theatre before, apart from in school. I'd always done TV. So that really interested me anyway. And I think that, you know, theatre is where I think you really sort of earn your stripes. Um, and you learn so much doing theatre as well, well I did, because, you know, like I say, it's all kind of new to me. Um, but I must admit, even though I was studying and I got an agent, there, there was nothing coming in at all. You know, there was no auditions, nothing like that. Uh, it was really, really quite, a really, really difficult. I was as well, I had no money. Um, so I decided that, again, if I was going to do this, I'd have to kind of approach it from a clean, completely clean slate. So it was the Manchester Fringe Festival was going on. Um, this was about after a year of, of moving back to, uh, back to Warrington. Um, the Manchester Fringe Festival, I basically the program for the festival of all the shows that were going to be on and I emailed all of them asking if there were any um, roles any any mm -hmm. any parts and um, I auditioned for a, for a, for two um, plays and got them both decided to do them both which now is crazy I, you know two different plays two different roles in the space of um, two months but because I've not acted for so long, I just wanted that opportunity, so I went for it. And I did, um, do you think? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think though, um, being a former um, Hollyoaks star worked in your favour, or did it maybe work against your favour? I think. I think two things. I think what worked against me was the fact that I'd just been out of the industry for so long, and I think. You know, it's a fast-paced industry. It's all about either what is new or what is um, what is reliable, what's always been there, what's constant. I think if you take yourself out of that, um, like I did, um, it's very hard to get back in. You know, because ultimately you've got to be honest with yourself as an actor. There's all, you know, there's as great as you can be. There's always another actor, another two, three, ten, fifteen actors that can do what you do as well, you know, to a certain degree. I'm not saying that, I think everyone's different and I think everyone's talented, obviously, but you you are a little bit of a, you know, there's, there's a conveyor belt of actors just being churned out. So why should they pick you? Just because you were on a soap 10 years ago, what, what does that bring them? It's an industry too, you know, it's a business. What are they gonna get out of that? So I think it was a little bit of that. And I think as well, I don't like to say that being on a, a soap had a negative effect because it sounds really defeatist and it sounds like an excuse. It might be that, but I don't like saying that because I feel like that's just anyone, you know, that's really easy for me to say if I don't get it. So if I audition now and don't get a job, I feel like it's a bit of a cop out me going, oh, I didn't get it because I'm a soap, you know, uh, even though it could be the case. So I don't personally subscribe to it, but I do think it can... I think it can get you in rooms and it can keep you out of rooms as well. Okay, now a, a lot of uh, a lot of the students that I take um, want to work in theatre, and they'll be graduating. A lot of them will be graduating um, soon, in the middle of a pandemic. Now I've got a question for you from Rachel, one one of uh, one of our students. So, for Rachel, if you can switch your uh, microphone and uh, camera on and ask. Darren and her question is actually good because I noticed what well, I was going to ask you later but Rachel will mention it, that you've been offering um, your skills online during the pandemic but if Rachel's uh, there are you there Rachel? Yeah I'm here. Here you are right so Hi. 
Okay. Off, over to uh, you. Hiya, Darren. Yeah, so um, I noticed that you've been like quite proactive over the pandemic and things like that by keeping sort of teaching and things like that going. Um, have you got, like a lot of us have been trying to do that, keep creative and obviously it's same doing it I was wondering if you had any advice for any graduates who are sort of we're leaving this year but we're also sort of competing well not competing but we're going for the same jobs that graduates from last year are going and we're also going into an industry where people have been out of work for nearly over a year so have you got any advice for people starting out on that at all yeah of course um first of all yeah I totally um advise with that I think it's just it's not going to be easy for any young people out there at the moment, but I think for actors it, it was already pretty tough, and obviously it's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, I think first of all, maybe sort of take some comfort in the fact that the industry is very aware of that. I think the, the industry as a whole has been completely blindsided by the situation, and, and and a lot of people that work behind the camera are in, are in the same boat. You know, they're struggling to get work and they're struggling to make ends meet and there's a lot of people that have been training to be camera operators and you know so the entire industry is in the same boat and I think there's some comfort to be sort of had there you know even casting directors who give us the jobs they've been out of work because well, there's not so much TV being made so I do think that there's going to be a lot of um, I think the industry should be a little bit more forgiving in that respect and I think as a result what we've seen already during the um, past 12 months is a lot of goodwill in terms of um, I've noticed a lot of casting directors giving their free time much more to um, sort of want to chat with actors and things like that. Seek those opportunities out for a start. Really take advantage of the fact that the industry is is being that generous and offering those opportunities out. Um, so first of all, yeah, for as long as this situation goes on for, really keep an eye out for all those three free opportunities to um to learn more and, and be in a, be in sort of some rooms with casting directors and directors and stuff like that and then when it comes to um being out there and you know getting the work i would say first of all don't do it alone you know make sure that you've got a group of um obviously it's great to have family and friends on side but i think you want to be in a, in a in a group with a bunch of creatives, a bunch of actors, uh, but also writers and, and 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 directors. You know, find find it, find a unit, find a family that that you know that all want to work and all want to be creative. And and I would say, whilst you're trying to get an agent or waiting for to get an audition, start making stuff because otherwise, there's nothing worse than sitting waiting the phone ring you know and it's amazing how you know if I get an audition and, and but I've got other stuff going on because I run my own sort of production company as well I do the audition I put my heart and soul into it but then I work on on, a, on, a, on producing something or writing something and that because that creative wheel keeps turning I'm always feel really satisfied so even though we I, I imagine you know, acting what you want what you all want to do there's nothing wrong with you know partnering up with writers and, and camera operators and, and creating your own work. I think that's really, really important. And, and I think it's actually essential these days as well. I think a casting director, because of the, the tools and the technology and the networks that are at our fingertips these days, I think, it, I, I think the day you come where an actor's can just sit and wait for the phone to ring. If you're not being proactive and creating your own work, a casting director will just say, well, why not? What kind of an actor are you if you, you're not doing that? So I would say, yeah, go for it. Make make your own work. Don't let, you know, don't let the industry um, sort of control you. Does it work? Create your own. Do you want to uh, do you want to follow up on that, Rachel? I mean, that's a great answer. I think. No, that's great. Thank you. That's great. Um, yeah, I, I'm sort of looking at other things as well, like directing and things like that. So it's just finding that experience. So thank you. I didn't know you had a production company. <laughs> ah, yeah. there you go. I do you now. See. Brilliant. Thank you, Rachel. That was, that was a really good question and, and a great answer as well. And I think what, what you got across there, Darren, is something that I, um, whether it's the students here or the other students I teach, how important collaboration is um, in, in any creative industry, working with people, from, from different sectors to do, to make new things. Yeah. 
absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's fun as well. It's great working with other people, getting excited about an idea, you know. And, it, and these days, it's brilliant because it can be anything. If you've got a mate or, or yourself who's written something like half a page, half an A4 page, if it's great, film it and just put it out. Why not? You know. Okay. Well, let's let's um, time's getting on. Let's do some quick fire uh, questions here. Um, so online presence. Are you on social media? Because I can't seem to find you. Um, I, th th there's, there's traces of, of you, but are you on social media? And how important is an online presence in today's world? Um, I am on social media. Um, I think it's personally, because I know everyone's got an opinion on this, um, I think it's really, really important, actually. Um, I think if you're a working actor, and you're already busy and you're just getting jobs thrown at you and you've got a profile, etc. then maybe you don't need social media. You know, you've already got those contacts. If you're trying to make it though, or trying to keep generating work, you need to have some sort of platform, you know? Mm -hmm. Also, shout about the work that you're doing. I think that's really important. As long as you do it in a, in a sort of, you know, if you don't do it like in, you know, in a sort of, pretentious way i think it's really important and, you, and you're sharing the work of other people as well that's how i see it you know if you promote you do on, on social media you, you're actually you, you're helping the writers the directors the entire production the theater you know you're not you're not selling promoting yourself you're promoting the show you know and i think that's your job as an actor to do that um, and what, what's the name of your production company so it's called ludovico i set it up about two years ago now uh, because i had a little baby and uh, obviously acting is unpredictable it's not a regular income and i just didn't want to be in a situation where we couldn't go on holiday because dad hadn't had an acting job for six months you know so when i was in london presenting i also um because i was in these production companies and on these sets I actually learned uh, a lot of other things as well editing producing uh, writing, directing, I got involved in all that side of it as well. So it just made sense to kind of bring all that together, really. And teaching as well. I was teaching a lot in Manchester when um, I first came back here as well. So I've just brought it all under one one roof. Um, and it's based here in Warrington, where I'm originally from. So I come full circle anyway. But balancing that and the acting is difficult. I love both, so it's not too much of a chore. Like I've got a play that I'm doing in Manchester next month that we're going to be recording because uh, obviously the theatre won't be open at Hope Mill Theatre. Um, so I'm trying to learn lines whilst producing a video, whilst getting funding for a short film that we're going to be doing. And it's all a little bit mad, but I quite like it. So, um, yeah. And, and is your production company open to external ideas coming to you? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go on the website, it's, it's um, helloludovico.co.uk, spelled L-U-D-O-V-I-C-O. And there's kind of three sort of facets to it. So we do short form media um, for uh, businesses, um, charities, things like that. Um, we have our studio where we bring uh, basically providing creative courses to people in Warrington that don't have access to them. So um, it doesn't matter what your background is. We we love sort of giving, uh, providing professional training to people in Warrington that haven't had access to it. So we've got acting courses and we've got a writing course, writing course, screenwriting course, camera operating course coming this year as well. Uh, and then also we've got the production side of it, which is basically short films and things like that. And yeah, there's a little section on the website that asks people to send in ideas, scripts, anything like that really. Okay. Maybe we've got um, so let's just quickly just a few more quick fire questions. Um, who are you? Are you a member of? I ask all the actors. Are you a member of Equity? And quick thoughts on Equity. Um, I'm not a member of it, no. But okay. and I never do saw then. the benefit. Do. <laughs> that's, all you, that's all you need to say. What, what I want to say is though, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not not a member for any particular. I think Burnley is fantastic. No, we've, we've, we've had different views, that's all that's the only reason I ask that. Every single actor's got a completely different view on it, and you're the first one who said, you're not a member, so let's move on. Um, if you could go back to talk to your younger self at Padgate High School, what advice would you give to him, or what would you say to the young 
Darren Jeffries? Um, in high school, I would say um, maybe don't care as much about what people think. You know, I was kind of a bit weirdly ashamed of, of being on a TV show, which is, you know, a bit strange, really. But um, maybe care a little bit less about that. Not too much, because I think it's good to kind of, you know, be modest. Um, but one thing I would say to my old self is to be more proactive. Because when I was getting the presenting jobs and the acting jobs, although I would go above and beyond when I got the job, I would, I would literally do my research. I would, you know, I took it very, very seriously. I wasn't doing a lot outside of that. I was just yeah. waiting. I was getting the job and I was working really hard on it and hoping that that would get me my next job. And it did for a certain amount of time. But I would say the best advice I can give is be proactive. I think that's amazing advice. The, the, I, it, like, like you, I've had a lot of lucky breaks in my career and I've just kind of rid, you know, grabbed them with both hands and made sure I've done the best job I can and ridden that wave. But the older I've become, the more I look back and go, I wish I'd been more proactive at the time. And who knows where else I got that. I think that's um, really good advice. Now, you did go back to, to Hollyoaks for, for a while, uh, but have you got a dream role? If, if, if you could do any role, what would be your dream role? Absolutely no idea. Never really thought about it, to be honest. Um, oh, I love some of, the, some of the shows that are coming out of late. I love, I absolutely love... Uh, but work, so, you know, uh, he wrote uh, James back in the day, and he's got a show called No Offense. I think the last series was on, was on before the pandemic. Actually, I love that show. Um, so that would be great. Um, I don't really think about things like that to be honest. I'm I'm kind of bit, I'm a bit I'm always kind of in the moment. I I don't really sort of think too much. So I don't really, don't really thought about that weirdly. Well. Can I, can I just say, Darren, I think your attitude is fantastic because you, you're you very laid back and, and self-effacing, which I think is really good as, as an actor. But um, you've pretty much, in our conversation, covered all the things I wanted to ask you towards the end. And um, we've had some good questions from, from the audience as well. Darren, thank you so much for joining us and, and, and good luck for the future. No, thank you. And, and good luck to everybody on this on this conversation, um, I know it's going to be difficult, but the life of an actor is difficult, isn't it? It's what you sign up for. So um, I think just, you know, work hard, stay positive. <laughs>